Here we have the Feynman diagram for neutron decay. First of all, let's take a look at the uh, neutron itself. It's composed of two down quarks and an up quark. And actually, well, let's, let's draw this in here. So here's our neutron. And, and that's what composes a neutron. Now, it, actually, there's a lot more going on inside of the neutron than meets the eye. There's virtual particles popping in and out of existence, matter and antimatter. There's gluons being bounced back and forth. And this stuff makes up 99% of the mass of the neutron. The actual um, mass of the quarks is less than 1% of the mass of a neutron. And that's just an interesting side note. What's important to us is that at any moment in time, you have an excess of two down quarks and one up quark for a neutron. We can also check charge conservation because we know that for a uh, down quark, its charge is minus one third of the uh, electron charge. And for an up quark, its charge is plus two thirds. So that's two thirds of the electron charge. So if we go down here, I know I have two down, so a minus one third plus a minus one third, and I have one up. And that all equals zero as it should because the neutron does not have any charge. Now over here, we have a proton and it's composed of uh, two up quarks and a down quark. That's our proton. And similarly to the uh, neutron, there's a heck of a lot going on in here. And um, the, the mass of these quarks only equates to uh, less than 1% of the mass of the proton. It's all this other stuff, the gluons bouncing around and the virtual particles that make up most of the mass of the proton. Let's check uh, charge conservation. Well, we got two ups, so that's a plus two thirds, plus a plus two thirds. And we have one down quark, so that's a minus one third. And that all equals plus one, as it should, because um, we know protons have uh, the same charge of the, as the electron, but positive. Great. Let's check out a few other things. For example, let's check uh, cons charge conservation as, we, uh, as time moves forward. Remember that for Feynman diagrams, time is on the x-axis and the space between uh, is on the y-axis. So for example, at uh, this moment in time, well, what is the total charge? Well, we already calculated it. The total charge is zero. And if we go forward here, well, we've got a minus one from the W, the W minus here, and we have a plus one from the proton. Well, that is equal to zero. And then again, we can go out to here. Again, it's the uh, three quarks that make up the proton. And, the, and then up here, we have an electron and we have a zero charged particle there. So we have a minus one, plus one equals zero. Great, charge is conserved throughout. What about um, lepton, lepton number? And specifically, we'll do um, the, lep, the electron number. So I'll give that an L and an E. Well, right here, there are no electrons. It's all quarks, so it's zero. Right here, we have the W particle and three quarks. So again, it's zero. Right here, well, we do have an electron. And then we have the antimatter particle of the electron neutrino. So we have a plus one and a minus one, that equals zero. So lepton number is, uh, specifically the electron lepton number is also conserved. Great, so this reaction can and does happen. You might wonder how atoms stay together. Well, when you have a nucleus of many uh, protons and neutrons, so here's, for example, the helium nucleus, Oh, let's uh, upgrade to lithium. And so we've got, you know, three of these guys. And, you know, they don't have to be in any particular order. In fact, they're always jiggling around. But in this situation, the neutron decay is suppressed and the neutron is stable. But you take a neutron by itself and, it's, and when it's by itself, it's not stable or in other words, it decays. Great, there are some thoughts on uh, particle physics and specifically neutron decay.